<clears throat> Hello, everybody. This is uh, Pamela Parrish getting on here for a big, big vlog, uh, talking about many things in the news as of late. Uh, let me get the TV stuff off here, and we can get started. I don't know if you guys have been watching the Crumbly case of the, you know, the mother of the Oxford shooter was recently charged with uh, four counts of involuntary manslaughter. This is a precedent uh, of a mother of a shooter being charged with manslaughter four times. And, you know, their actions in court of the parents sealed their doom for me because if I found out my son had committed a mass shooting and killed people, I would be crying my ass off, not sitting in court, blowing kisses at my husband if I were married. Those actions alone show where the parents' head was at. A lot of people aren't happy about the guilty verdict, but you know what? You know, you got a son that was a powder keg. He had a lot of problems. He didn't know how to deal with it. He didn't have the functionality to deal with it. And you parents did nothing to help your son. And as you can see, he's on my TV right now in video playback. This was just released about 15 minutes ago. Ethan Crumbly's mother is probably going to be having some heavy time in jail, and as she should. Their actions in court as her son went up the river for his part in it. A husband and wife blowing kisses at each other. What kind of shit is that? It just boggles the mind. And you know... One person said it best on CBS's uh, webpage. If more parents uh, were indicted for their child, who is a minor, maybe all the shootings would stop. Maybe people would learn to grow up and put their big boy pants on. Gee, if I find a way to get a gun to school and I do the crime, they could possibly do time for my crime as well. You know, there is no help for Ethan Crumbly. There is none. You know, and they said, count one, involuntary manslaughter. Count two, involuntary manslaughter. Count three, involuntary manslaughter. Count four, involuntary manslaughter. As you see on the screen. And good. She's not acting so cocky now. She can't blow kisses at Kisses at her husband now. I'm glad they're sending her to jail. Maybe it'll send a message to other parents. They need to start watching what their kids are doing. Whether they're living at home. You know, you pay for that room they stay in. You check their computer. You check their phones. You check all their social media. If they show any inkling of wanting to harm people. Even writing it in their precious diary. I don't care if it pisses off the kid. You check that diary. And today we set a precedent in our American justice system. They charged a mother with involuntary manslaughter. Maybe she didn't pull the trigger, but she should have saw the warning signs in her kid and got him help, which she did not. Same thing for the husband. So we'll have to wait and see what happens to hubby boy before we close this thing out completely. But in terms of the mother, yes, justice was served. Now, I don't know how much time she'll get, but I think it should send a message to helicopter parents that if you're not monitoring your kids' social media or even the friends they hang out with, they do crime, you could possibly end up doing some time yourself. Especially if the child is a minor. So, yeah. I think it is high time something like this should have happened. And let's go back to another case that should have had something like this done. Uh, Columbine. 
Remember 1999? Several kids were murdered. You know, the Columbine shooters, both of them ended up dead. And yet, um, let's see, the one shooter that had the father that kept a journal of all his son's activities and crimes that he committed. What kind of father does that? Let me look up Columbine here real quick and see. Let's see. I think it was Eric Harris. Let me see. Yeah, it was Eric Harris's father. Let's see. I see. Okay, father. Of his son's crimes. Yeah, um, going back to Columbine, Time did a piece on this. It was called the Columbine Papers. You know, and Susan Klebold has had to live with the fact that her son Dylan had taken part in that shooting. But what they what you probably don't realize is that I think the father of Eric Harris was keeping a log of all the crimes of what their son had done. Let's see. It says the Columbine killers, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, have often been portrayed as disengaged from the lives of, the, of their sons and unaware of the dark paths lay ahead. But 936 pages of evidence taken from the killer's homes and, and cars were released by the Jefferson County Sheriff's offices on Thursday. This was uh, posted back in 2006. So a notebook was kept by Eric's father. Wayne, details a parent's involvement in his child's downward spiral. Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold killed 12 kids and a teacher at Columbine High School in Littleton, Colorado on April 20th, uh, 1999. The two punks then, then unalive themselves in the school's library. The notebook leaves little doubt that the Harrises at least were aware of their son's problems and had taken steps to get him help. The papers also further document Eric's well-known preoccupation with Nazis, Charlie Manson, and Napalm. And it goes on to say, the notebook, le you know, okay, we already read that, the stenographer notebook Bears the label Eric. It begins with Wayne Harris making notes about another parent's accusations that Eric had thrown snowballs, damaged a classmate's car, plotted against a friend's house, and was involved with alcohol. The father or mother in the notebook's writings writes, talk to Eric, a snowball, angry. There were cryptic references to, to yelling, yanking on car door and being a, a, a little bully. Pushes yelling. That's what the article says. I'm not stumbling here. And it also says, at one point, the father records that his son would like to talk to an accuser's face to face with an adult present. There is a notation that the father had called another parent, left a message, and hasn't received a return phone call. The pages of that notebook are filled with comments that seem to be, have been made during phone calls and conversations, and they, are, they reveal uh, snapshots of trouble. 
So what I'm trying to say here is that Eric Harris's father had kept a journal of all his son's problematic escapades. They tried to get him help. They gave him a talking to, and that most of the writings were done during um, phone calls or face-to-face -face meetings. Um, you know, and after Columbine happened, I think Eric Harris put a real big black eye on his father. I mean, what kind of a father would keep a diary? I know he's a he was a minor when it happened, but he could have gotten his son help, even if he didn't want it. He could have had him institutionalized. But even if he got the treatment that he uh, desperately needed, there's a chance that a person can revert back to their prob problematic crappy selves. I'm not going to read the article about Columbine. I'm going to post it in the sidebar here. But yeah, I mean, it's time that parents take responsibility for their kids. You don't check their computers. You don't check their social circle. You don't, you don't check their computers. You don't check their social circle. You don't check their freaking cell phones. You don't check their, their damn notebooks. Of course, it's going to be a recipe for disaster. Look at uh, Alyssa Bustamante. There was a girl that was headed for trouble. And she would often, um, you know, she would have this look of being a good student on the outside. But one day she said to a friend of hers, I wonder what it would be like to kill someone. And she wound up killing a neighbor girl that lived down the way from her and buried her in a small, shallow grave in the woods near her home. Again, what did the grandparents know? Did they ever check her room? I know the police sure did. I've seen pictures of that lady's room, okay? She was a teenager. They went into the teen's room. They found weird drawings on the wall. And if it hadn't been the neighbor girl that was murdered, Alyssa could have murdered her sister. So, yeah. How much did the grandparents actually know? How much did her father actually know? Because Alyssa had a taste for cutting herself. And she would throw fits. And yet she wanted to feel what it was like to actually kill somebody. Again. A parent or a grandparent is not held accountable. You know, and I think, I don't know if Alyssa's parent, grandparents want her out. I certainly would not want her out. And it's really sad. You know, and in truth, I think, I, you know, I'm more than glad that in, the, in today's case that was wrapped up on Crumbly's mother, she should get the maximum uh, possible. The people that were killed, Hannah St. Julia, age 14, Tate Meir, age 16, Madison Baldwin, age 17, and Justin Schilling, age 17. Four students were murdered. All because... Um, I guess Ethan didn't like how they were or he had some type of mental breakdown. It doesn't excuse what he did. He still killed four students. And I think it's rather telling about how Ethan looks and the looks of his father and the looks of his mother. And like I said, what sealed the fate for this current case is the actions of Ethan's mother and father in court. Who in the hell blows kisses to each other during a court proceeding? That's what sealed the fate for me. You know, and like somebody said, if they find out, if the parents are keeping logs or they know something's going on with the kid and the kid does something absolutely extreme, then the parents should be arrested. I think they should be arrested, 
tried and charged if it comes down to that. And uh, too many people have died because parents are so blind to what their kids are doing. You know, and uh, going back to Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, many people had given, um, given Dylan Klebold's parents warning signs and probably telling Wayne and his wife the warning signs of their son being extremely violent. You know, and it's it's scary because on one point the child could be looking optimistic and ready for the future, but then in maybe 15 or 20 minutes later, he would be out breaking into a car or into a van and stealing stuff. That's not the way to further your future. That's the way of putting your butt into jail. But yeah. Ethan Crumbly's mother is now going to prison on four felony counts of manslaughter. Involuntary manslaughter. Put her butt in jail. Never let her out. And I only hope that they do the same thing to the father. Because their actions in court show they don't take their situation seriously. And they should be prosecuted to the limit of the law. So... Yeah. Another thing I want to talk about here real quick. I heard about the death of Toby, Toby Keith today. I heard he died last night. He was at home. He died peacefully with his family around him. And for those that don't know, he was a country singer known for the song, courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue, Water for, or Beer for My Horses, and How Do You Like Me Now? Uh, he was 61, I think, when he died. Uh, he had stomach cancer and had been battling it for a couple of years and was doing interviews up till about a few weeks ago, saying that he was doing better. You know, he wasn't great, but he was doing better and that he was looking for other forms of treatment. But I heard he passed away. And at first, I didn't know... I couldn't remember who he was, but then they started reading off all these song titles. And then I was like, oh, no way. Toby Keith is gone. He's one of the last of the great country singers, you know. That's why I tell you people, if you see somebody that you like and they're still alive, you better go see them because you never know when their clock is going to run out. And I had no idea that Toby Keith had, had died until sometime earlier today. My thoughts go out to his family, friends, colleagues, and the country music world as a whole. Most of my experience with Toby was either via radio or YouTube. I didn't own any of his records, but you know, the, the solace that I could take from this is that he's free from his pain. He doesn't have to hurt anymore. And that's all we could say about anyone. And now we're going to talk about the big one. Vince McMahon, the head man of WWE, or should I say the head felon of WWE. You know, he's facing some serious charges of uh, sex trafficking and abuse and I think Vince McMahon should pay for his crimes. There is just no ways around it. People like WrestleMania have talked about it. Um, I think, let's see, WWE, let's look that up. Yeah, let's see, news. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Brock Lesnar has been um, has been removed from WWE. Oh, he has been removed from WWE 2024 40 Years of WrestleMania cover. Wow. 
you know, I think that let's see here. Um, Vince. Okay. Let's see if I want to see if he's been arrested for one. No. Oh, they I think they're trying to hide the news. Okay. Oh my god, this is stuff from last year, so yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff from last year. Planning returns. They're trying to hide a lot of the news from Vince of uh, Vince McMahon's dirty doings on the mat. You can go around YouTube. You can find a lot of it. Um, I think uh, the guy from Dark Side of the Ring, the host of Dark Side of the Ring, has been really thinking about whether or not to continue to be a fan in the WWE. And I could certainly understand where he's coming from. Um, you know, Vince McMahon has been reportedly uh, abusing and sexually abusing um, women who work for him. Um, one such woman has... She had signed a, a non-disclosure agreement, but he only paid like a thousand dollars of it, or a million dollars. I think she had like a million dollars paid, but she was supposed to get like three million bucks. And uh, let's see here. Let me go to YouTube and I will look it up. So that way we can clear up this mess. Even places like Double Toasted has talked about this. Uh, and that's normally, the guy is normally a comic, but when all these allegations started coming out, um, I think even comics were talking about this. And let's see here. Uh, B-I-N-C-E, McMahon, allegations. You know... It says here, news and sex trafficking, Vince McMahon from the Post. I'm looking at videos. And people are saying um, that it's going to be disastrous for this company, as it should. And it says here, one other person said, Wrestling News Now Insider says, Brock Lesnar banned by WWE forever after Vince McMahon allegations as Triple H is angry. WWE News. And people are saying Vince McMahon is a creep. Does a 1992 clip prove sexual assault allegations against WWE CEO? And somebody says he's innocent. I don't think so. I don't think so. You know, and people are talking about John Laurinaitis and possibly Triple H. And I heard they're now under the company TKO. I think in 2025, I think some of their, um, their big wrestling matches are going to Netflix. But let's see. It says here. Jesse on Fire has a tagline on his video. Vince McMahon to be prosecuted. John Laurinaitis betrays him and intends to co cooperate and testify. You know, and uh, even Bischoff and the guy from Dark Side of the Ring were talking about it. You know... And a lot of people are blaming the woman that brought the lawsuit, the current lawsuit that's going on. She could have walked out. No. I don't know if you guys watch uh, Bruce Rivers. He's the criminal lawyer. Yeah. Even Bruce Rivers covered this. 
Bruce Rivers, a hotshot lawyer from Minnesota, has talked about this. Um, he says, I believe this woman's story. You can't make some of that stuff up. She has texts. She has texts of what he sent to her. And at one point, he said to her, if I see you in the hallway, I will blank you. And if you want to see that, um, look up Bruce Rivers, Criminal Lawyer Reacts. CRL Bruce Rivers. And he talks about it. What he did is uh, what uh, Vince did is so cruel and inhumane. He should be prosecuted. And I have no doubt that the stuff that he's been doing, he's been doing since the beginning of World Wrestling Federation. Um, some news media outlets have said since back in 1992, but I think it goes back further than that. Dark Side of the Ring should really cover this. I think they should cover Dark Side of the Ring with an episode called The Dark Side of Vince McMahon. And they need to expose everything. And if TKO, TKO wants to start clean, they need to jettison all the people that were ever connected to Vince that had no, no knowledge of what, what the hell was going on. You know, no woman should have to screw her way up to gain a position in the company. Yet, Vince starts off like a knight in shining armor. Oh, I'll pull you out of your hard times. You'll have a good job, good salary. All your problems will be behind you. And then, maybe a short time after, he'll start upping the ante. As a matter of fact, he uh, damaged this woman so badly. I don't know if she's able to have children. That is how bad it is. Because uh, she would have to do threesomes, you know, and guys like Vince would hold their job over their heads, but yet the person's afraid to leave because uh, people like Bruce Rivers, the criminal lawyer, had said that she was monitored and watched. So to somebody over in Australia that said, well, she could have just packed up and left. It's not that simple. It's not that simple. You have Vince McMahon, a guy in a high position of power that has let a lot of people get hurt and die on his watch. One such case is Owen Hart. And you have people dying of heart attacks at a young age. Brutus, the, you know, Brutus Beefcake. Um, Junkyard Dog was one that died of a heart attack at the age of 55, I think. And let's not forget um, Jimmy Superfly Snuka, who supposedly mur murdered his girlfriend. And let's not forget the Chris Benoit debacle, uh, who murdered his wife and youngest son. And... You know, they're quick to erase people like Chris Benoit from the books of WWE. What about Jimmy Superfly Snooker? I mean, he was the last person to see his girlfriend alive. You know, and I don't think he was ever investigated for Owen Hart's death. You know? Um, the announcer on the Over the Edge pay-per-view that night had told everybody at home that Owen Hart had died, but Vince McMahon didn't have the brass cojones to tell that crowd, we're going to have to cancel the show. One of our wrestlers has died tonight from a fall, but you know, they're like, we'll have three or four more matches and we'll call it a night. And I'm so glad Martha Hart has stood her ground in terms of how the WWE had treated Owen. And she wouldn't want him in that slug hole of a Hall of Fame. No. Too many people have died on Vince's watch. 
And Vince McMahon is accused of sex trafficking and passing a woman off as a toy. You know, and like I said, no woman should have to fear uh, losing her job if she doesn't want to give the guy sexual favors. She just want, wanted a job. She came on, this woman that filed the current lawsuit came on as a paralegal and was later promoted to an assistant. And I heard people like Johnny Laurinaitis may have been involved in some of these threesomes. Maybe Triple H was involved. And if TK, TKO wants to bounce back from this, they need to get rid of all the hangers-on that were privy to what was going on in WWE. That includes any wrestlers. That includes Vince McMahon's son and Vince McMahon's daughter. If they knew what the hell was going on, the hangers-on should also be brought up on charges and put in jail. I don't care if Vince McMahon is almost 79 years old. You do the crime, you do the time, right? You know, and it doesn't look good on, on the face of WWE. You know, Vince may be one of the guys that made WWE what it was, but if it's at the, at the cost of hurting people or young people dropping dead like flies, are you kidding me? There is just no way I would want Vince out on the streets. You know, and he's done some of the same stuff that R. Kelly has done, except R. Kelly went after teenagers, and he would defecate on them and treat them like, uh, like pin cushions, like targets. You know, there was, there was a story going around that she was supposed to have some type of sexual tryst with him and another person, and he defecated on her, and he got up to take a shower, and he told the woman, you need to stay here and pleasure him. You don't get cleaned up. You keep going. He went in to take a shower while she was covered in his filth. Are you kidding me? They need to try him. They need to bring him into a court of law. They need to question his son and daughter. And if they were privy to what was going on, they need to be brought up on charges too. Anybody who is connected to Vince. You know, and it, it, it's sick. You know, um, if you want to see the, the whole spiel, you can go to Bruce Rivers, Criminal Lawyer Reacts, CRL Bruce Rivers, and he's got the text. It's all public info. And uh, I think if you have the stomach to read it, I suggest you go over there. It's CRL, Criminal Lawyer Reacts, Bruce Rivers. And he has uh, all these all these text messages. People like Double Toasted have talked about it. Other members of the media have talked about it. It's terrible. It's, it's shocking. It's terrible. And you can't make some of that shit up. You cannot. You know, and Vincent had this role of not, not having any relations with anybody in the company. One girl that went on Geraldo years ago said, remember he, you know, they had a conversation and he said, you know what I said about not having any relations with anyone in the company? And she's like, yeah. And he goes, well, you just did. And he sat back and he laughed at her. You know, and there was a breach of contract. In my mind, it doesn't matter whether it was 1992 or 1982. If there's any accusation of sexual harassment or sexual harm, it should be investigated. I mean, I had it happen to me twice. Once as a 12-year-old and once around 2007, 2008, New Year's weekend. And no, I wasn't drunk. 
I remember everything that happened to me. I'm not going to talk about it on this stream, but if you want me to talk about it, I will talk about it. But for those that want to know, I tried to get my case through the court, but it didn't go anywhere. Because in the mind of Urban Express, I would have to be dead in order to be believed. I almost was, because at that time I didn't have a cell phone. So, yeah. And I think the woman that has the current lawsuit on Vince has post-traumatic stress disorder, not to mention damage to her internal body parts. Like using a sex, um, a sex toy or a vibrator that's not supposed to go inside, but somehow ma uh, Vince managed to put it up inside this woman and tear up the inside of her body. That is how bad it is. And he talks about black men's Johnsons, you know. Big, big black Johnsons going all up in your areas and having uh, come come out. You know, um, I think Vince needs to be tried and prosecuted and arrested if it comes to that. 78 or not, he needs to do some time. He cannot hide from this anymore. He shouldn't be hiding from this anymore. And the hotshot lawyer he's got needs to be brought uh, uh, in front of the bar and and disbarred. So, yeah. I mean, seriously, folks. So many people have been hurt by Vince McMahon. And I think a few people had killed themselves. One young lady um, wanted out so she could take care of her daughter. And she tried to get out and get her life back, but I guess her depression got the better of her and she wound up hanging herself. And even uh, relations to wrestlers have gotten on their YouTube platforms and talked about it. Um, as soon as I get off here, I'll, I'll put a playlist together and you can look at some of the videos. I know I haven't been on here very much, but I've been taking care of my emotional health. But when I heard about all the dams breaking open about Vince McMahon, I knew I had to get on here and talk about it. And I hope they do prosecute him because a sexual deviant is a sexual deviant. He's never going to change. He burns a lot of people. He certainly, um, he certainly burned a lot of people in his tenure. And it's not just the women that worked for him. We're talking about people like Owen Hart and JYD. A lot of people died young under his tenure. And all of these cover-ups and smoke screens have got to stop. But I will find these videos and I will feature it on my channel. And you can look through it for yourself. I'm not going to share any text messages. It would make me feel itchy, like I'm itching right now. It makes me feel dirty. People like Double Toasted and WrestleMania and other people are talking about it. It's, it's something that needs to be talked about. And if you're dealing with sexual assault, I feel you. It doesn't make it any easier to get help because half the time... Most people won't even believe you. When it first happened to me at 12 years old, I didn't even have the guts to tell my father because I didn't think he would believe a 12-year-old, you know, his own 12-year-old daughter. When my dad got me home, I was in the bathroom crying my eyes out, and I told my mother that a guy put his leg around my chair. I was sitting at a round table waiting for my dad to finish playing a game of pool. A guy comes over, put his, legs around, put his leg around my chair, and he forced a kiss on me. And then I thought, I better think of a way to get out of here, otherwise he might try again. And I said, I think I have to go. My dad's almost finished with his pool game. 
and he managed to let me go. But by the time I got out to the pool room, I said, Dad, I said, I want to go home. And he says, but honey, we just got here about an hour ago. And I said, I want to go home. And he's like, okay, I just started this game, but I'll tell them not to touch this table until I come back. So he drives home, and I'm quiet the whole way home. I come in my house. I head into the bathroom, and the dam burst. Mom's like, what's wrong? And I told her. And she went out and told, told my dad. And he's like, why the hell didn't she tell me? And my mom said, well, maybe it's because you're a guy and she's afraid you might not believe her. And he says, well, I'll be right back. He says, I'm going to go up and put the word out up there that uh, I'm going to keep my eye out for the city. So he says, uh, somebody's up here messing with my daughter, forcing kisses on her. She didn't ask for them, and she didn't need um, kisses forced on her. And I hid in my house for weeks. I hid in my house for weeks, man. I didn't go anywhere. I didn't do anything. And my dad finally said, come on, honey. I said, I'll take you out up to the club. And you sit up there at the bar when it was allowed. Back in the 80s, it was allowed. I'll get you a Shirley Temple. The one with Sprite, grenadine, and a cherry, and some candy. I thought, okay, what's the worst that could happen? Things are going good. We're shooting the crap. I'm talking with Dolly and with whoever else was there. And then I get money to go play the jukebox, and I look over, caddy corner from me. And I knew it was that guy because he gave me that look, like, you dumb bitch. You dumb bitch. You told your father, didn't you? And I said, Dad, Dad. And he's like, what, honey? And I said, you see that dude over there? And he's like, uh, yeah, why? And I said, that's the guy that was forcing kisses on me. And he's like, really? He says, you stay here. I'll go over and take care of this. And he walked over there and he said, uh, you're the guy that's been forcing kisses on my daughter. You fuck with my daughter, there's going to be problems. If I'm not here, you know, if I'm here, I will kick your ass the next time I see you. And if I'm not here, my sons will kick your ass. And I don't think I saw him again after that. I think he kind of slinked away when my dad had words with him. So, yeah. And I heard that sucker died not too long afterwards from, I guess, his old age. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy, to tell you the truth. A pervert is always a pervert. And while I'm here, I may as well tell you about the New Year's weekend of 2007. Coming home on 2008 from a friend's apartment. She didn't have enough food in her apartment. The driver asked if I was hungry. This bus that I was on was Urban Express, which was an extension of Coda Mainstream at the time. And I said, yeah, I'm hungry. So he took me over to McDonald's from my house and bought me a hamburger and drank. And I started eating the food that he bought. And he says, you know, I want a piece of you. I'm like, excuse me? You know, and um, he says, yeah, we could get it on real good. We can go to a hotel. And this crap went on for 20 freaking minutes. And at that time, I didn't own a cell phone. Not one cell phone to my name. And I was sitting in my power chair, strapped down. My crutches, which I used to walk around my friend's apartment, were down on the floor where I could not get to them. I was strapped down. I was helpless as a kitten. I couldn't get away. And after 20 minutes of that crap, I said, you know, I think you need to take me home. My mom and dad are probably worried about me. And worried does not begin to underscore how my parents were feeling that night. 
My mom was outside in her slippers and house coat in the middle of January. And my best friend, whom I left some 45 minutes before, um, said, where have you been? I was worried about you. You know, after I got off the bus, I said, I need to talk to you two right now. And my mom reached up and got my crutches. And the guy folded up that fucking lift and took off like a bat out of hell. Because he knew his ass was grass. So I get up in the garage. And my mom's like, what's wrong? And I told him. And I said, I know I shouldn't have gone with him to have a hamburger. But I was hungry. And he took that as a weakness to try and get me to go to bed with him. He wanted a piece of me, Mom. You know how that feels? And I sat and cried in that garage for 45 more minutes before I went into the house. And my friend that was with me that had pulled up in her own car, she felt the worst of all because of what happened. And she goes, Pam, uh, he's not the first per- you're not the first person that he's hit on. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And she goes, well, he hit on me too. And you could have knocked me over with a feather. And she says, we're going to get a lawyer. We're going to fight this guy. We're not going to let him get away with it. So we called, we called um, Urban Express, had him take us off their list. And Coda Mainstream stood with us. They said, we believe these ladies. We got the filings. They gave their statements. We believe them. They've been trusted writers for years. Not one problem. And yet, Urban Express called me and my friends liars. And the case didn't go anywhere. But I'll tell you this. That son of a bitch would later get fired for having porn on his camera. And good. Good, 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 good. He should be nowhere near children or anybody, especially those with special needs, those that couldn't speak out. They found a lot of footage on that guy's camera from his locker, believe it or not. So, yeah, I think people like that guy need to be up under a prison, just like I think Vince McMahon needs to be up under a prison. And was with, uh, with Ethan Crumbly's mother going to prison? This is just the start of what's going on. So, yeah. It's time we start charging these helicopter parents with their kids' crimes. If they're, if they're um, minors, which I'm sure Ethan was, they need to be charged with a crime. Because they are basically neglecting their child's needs. If they're not willing to get the child the help that they, that they need, then they shouldn't be parents. Because four kids died at Oxford. So, yeah. So, you know, I think, you know, we set a precedent today. A historic moment in terms of, of prosecuting a parent. And in truth, it should have happened when Columbine happened especially with uh, Eric Harris's father who kept a journal of all his son's crimes. What kind of parent does that? Mm. Well, I'm going to get off, ladies and gentlemen, go check uh, the regular mail, and then I'll come back on and start putting together a playlist for Vince McMahon so you guys will know what the hell I'm talking about. I'll have the videos from Double Toasted and whoever else is talking about it, WrestleMania and all that. So, yeah. I'll keep you up to date on the news and hope you all have a good rest of your week. Look out for your fellow neighbors and try to do the right thing and help others when needed. And if you're dealing with um, issues with your children, and they won't open up to you, and you're paying for their room, their computer, their cell phone, you need to start looking into what your kids are doing because you could be saving other people's lives because of that. 
And if you're watching wrestling, um, you really need to look into how the Attitude Era was portrayed because I think it speaks a lot of volumes about not just Vince McMahon, but anybody else on the staff at WWE had a particular mindset about demeaning women and certain wrestlers. So, yeah. I think Vince McMahon should do some real time. And it, I'm surprised it took this long to bring his demons out into the light. Um, I think he should be prosecuted. I think his son and daughter need to be looked into as well. And I, one question I must ask, how much did Vince's wife know about what was going on? She's not totally in the dark here. I don't consider her totally innocent either. So, yeah. I'll get back on here in a couple of days. We'll talk more about the wrestling situation. And uh, we'll go from there. Probably this weekend or something. So, yeah. Have a good rest of your night, ladies and gents. And I'll get back on here in a couple of days. All right. I'm out.